This is Down the Stretch on Sirius XM Radio. Here are your hosts, Dave Johnson and Bill Finley. This has to be the most fascinating story of the day. It's about a derby and about uh, a rider in the derby. And she joins us right now, Sophia Mangley, who's married to Navin Mangley, who's riding at Monmouth Park right now. But, Sophia, I'm going to let the, the facts sort of drip out here. Uh, just to answer me a few uh, easy questions. First of all, uh, when do you leave for this derby? I leave in two weeks on July 30th. And where do you fly from Newark to where? Uh, I'm riding Newark to Beijing and then from Beijing into Ulaanbaatar. Okay. And Ulaanbaatar is where? That is the capital city of Mongolia. So might this be the Mongolian Derby? It would be the Mongol Derby. You are correct. Okay. Now, we, we know derbies as being a, a distance of a mile and a quarter, sometimes on a flat racetrack, uh, sometimes on grass. What is the surface and distance of your Mongolian Derby that you're going to compete in, Sophia? Uh, well, it's just a tad bit longer than our normal race. Yes. It is 1,000 kilometers. So that's 620 miles. Uh, correct. It is officially the longest horse race in the world. And the terrain is across the steppes of uh, Outer Mongolia. Oh, my God. Um, so a lot of uh, rolling grasslands, some mountains, hills, and uh, absolutely no roads to speak of. Sophia, good afternoon. Good morning still for a few minutes. It's Bill Finley here. Thanks for good joining morning. us. First of all, uh, how does a uh, person who works at Monmouth Park uh, get involved in something like this? How the heck did you get involved in the Mongolian Derby? Oh, the Internet. How else? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually uh, found out about the race on Equidaily.com. Uh, last September, I actually saw a link to uh, an interview they did with the winner from last year who actually was American. And the minute I saw it, I was like, oh, my goodness, I, I should find out more about this. And I actually, um, you know, asked my husband, like, honey, do you mind if I apply for this, <laughs> this race? And he's like, oh, sure. He didn't even think I'd get in. And um, I had to apply. And then also uh, they interviewed me, and they interviewed my reference to uh, – was racehorse trainer Sharon Ross out in Emerald Downs, and they offered me the spot. Now, Sophia, from start to finish, how long does this take? Uh -huh. Well, it depends if you want to win. Okay. <laughs> so, um, they give you 10 days to complete 1,000 kilometers. Um, those that are looking to be in the lead pack should expect to finish in 7 to 8 days, which I do. And how many horses will you ride in the Derby? 35 to 40 different horses. My goodness. Now, <laughs> Sophia, is there, uh, I would think, you know, it's, and some of these, you, you think of human runners doing some of these things that take days and days and, and, and all sorts of, of Iron Man things and stuff like that. Is there, will the winner likely go how many hours a day? Do, do the real stalwarts try to go 23 hours a day? Or and do some people, you know, take it a little bit easier? How much sleep is involved? Well, for safety reasons, we're only permitted to ride during daylight hours. So from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. is when we can actually be out on course and moving. Uh, we all wear satellite trackers, so if anybody is moving after the designated hours, they'll have a time penalty. Um, unless, of course, they're out chasing their horse somewhere. <laughs> um, they do allow you to go chase after them. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it kind of depends on what you can take. One of the other riders I was speaking to this week said, you know, it's not really how good a rider you are. It's just how much pain you can really endure um, of the person that's going to be able to win. Um, you know, I've been training for it since January. How do you train for it? Um, I just have tried to get a lot of saddle time. Um, it's been difficult because, of course, working at Mammoth during the height of our season, um, I'm in the office most of the time, but I'll run before work, bike to work, and then on my days off, I'm actually out riding. Uh, I have about four different farms in rotation and about six to eight different horses that I'll get on uh, to get about, you know, four to six hours of ride time in. Now, Sophia, I know our producer, when uh, he was setting up the phone call, was talking to you, said that at times you could be as, as far as a, a hundred miles away from a hospital. Uh, riding horses is dangerous business. What would happen if, God forbid, and we're, we certainly hope this doesn't happen to you or anybody else, but if you fell and got hurt that far away from medical attention, what would they do? And have they taught you anything to help yourself to, to, to step in and be not just rider, but your own doctor? 
<laughs> Funny you should ask that. <laughs> um, we actually have three days of pre-training uh, before they let us out on the course, and part of that is to make sure that you can ride as well as you said you could and also teach us such important medical information such as how to reset your own femur. I was new. I needed to know how to do that. <laughs> um, while we're actually riding, we have a satellite tracker and an emergency beacon that has two buttons, one if we require the vet team for the horse and one if we require the emergency team for ourselves. Uh, part of it is, is that you're in an area where there is no roads, so it may take them a great deal of time to actually reach you via the support vehicles, and then once they do, there may not be a helicopter available to transport you to Seoul, South Korea, where the major medical facilities are. That being said, in the last couple of years, um, you know, people have had some bumps and bruises, but there's never been anything serious, and no horse has ever been injured in the race. So, Sophia, let me get this straight. You said that the winner, you've been told, is person not so much as the best rider, but the person that can endure the most pain. To prepare for the race, they've taught you how to reset your own femur, and your days may be away from a hospital. Sophia, are you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> my husband thinks so. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, I, not really. I mean, part of it is everything involved in this race is right in my comfort zone. Um, you know, riding horses, I've been riding since I was small. You know, always wanted to be a jockey, but I love food, so that kind of didn't work out for me. Um, camping, being outdoors for 10 days, the travel, um, navigating a course that just via GPS and 11 pounds of gear. To me, that's part of the adventure. And I know it seems crazy to some people, but to me, I'm like, oh, that's right in my comfort zone. I can do this. <laughs> and Sophia, uh, the, is there money involved? Is, is there a purse? Is there, does the winner take home a nice paycheck? I wish. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, we win glory, uh, which actually I think keeps it a bit more honest because then you don't mm -hmm. have people that are coming in that are going to do absolutely everything mm -hmm. to win at the sake of the welfare of their horse or of the other riders. I mean, and at the end of the day, if, uh, if someone's hurt, they want you to stop and help them, not just ride them on over and <laughs> keep on going. Sophia, we, we have less than a minute to, to go, but how many will be in the field? It looks like there's going to be 25 riders, and they're all from around the world, and there's only one other American. Wow. Well, and Bill wants to know if there's wagering. <laughs> Superfectus. Well, are there Superfectus, Sophia? Well, you know Brad Thomas is going to set the morning. <laughs> right, Thomas, yes. So you know you're going to get something good. <laughs> oh, Sophia, we, we can't wait to hear uh, your stories after you come back. The best of luck. We hope that you've got that trophy. I'm sure they'll, they'll, uh, they'll give you a trophy if you're victorious. And I'll bet your husband's going to be very, very jealous after you win a derby. I think he will be, but he will be following along um, at mongolderbyrider.com. That's my blog, and you'll G be able give to us, track my progress. Give us that one more time. It's mongolderbyrider.com. Okay. Sophia Mangali, thanks so much for being with us. Good luck. Have a good flight over to Beijing and then to Mongolia, and uh, we, uh, we so appreciate you being with us. All right. Thank you guys so much. That's a story and a half. That's a great story. Absolutely great story. That's a great one. And, we so pre and we'll bring you up to speed when she comes back after this incredible journey of 620 miles. What a derby. This is Down the Stretch with Dave Johnson and Bill Finley.